Y'all nice. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful. And George has just joined us. Yes. George, you look handsome tonight. <laughs> you look very handsome. All right, I'm going to turn it over to Brother Fred. Okay. The uh, title of the message tonight is Distinguishing Spirits. Uh, distinguishing between good and evil. And it's important for all of us to be able to do this. Uh, it helps us uh, be safe and protected. Uh, it helps us make decisions that are appropriate. Uh, without this gift and without the ability mm -hmm. to discern uh, spirits, then we're going to make mistakes. And we're going to make possibly some major mistakes. But this will help us... Uh, stay out of the devil's realm and uh, we need to be able to discern what is of the Lord and what is of the devil and so we do have enemies and uh, the book of Ephesians uh, tells us who those enemies are and, and it, this is very familiar with all of you it's Ephesians 6 verse 12 and I'm going to ask Sherry to, to read that for us it says here, for we do not wrestle with flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. Okay, so we've got enemies, real enemies, and we don't see them, but they're all around. And uh, they operate through people, and uh, they can operate uh, and come and try to bring calamity. Jesus said, mm -hmm. uh, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So their mission is to steal, yeah. kill, and destroy. Now, we were all under their influence at one time, but when we've accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we've been transferred from uh, the, translated from the kingdom of darkness mm -hmm. into the kingdom of light. And so no longer are we under his influence, but yet he's still uh, going to come and try to bring calamity to you and your family and to your loved ones. And we've got to be prepared because we're in a war between Amen. good and evil. And how will you know uh, who you're fighting against if you cannot discern spirits or distinguish between good and evil spirits? And uh, Ephesians uh, 2, 1, I want you to read this, so verses 1 and 2. And you he made alive, who were dead in your trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. Okay, so we were all under his control, under the devil's control. But when Jesus made us alive, we were dead in our trespasses and sins, but Jesus has made us alive and no longer are we there. But what we want to do is to reach back uh, into those people that are still under the influence of the devil and to bring them out. Amen. Introduce Amen. them to Jesus and, and bring them out of darkness and bring them in into the light. the light. Okay, so... Well, what does the religious system typically do about discerning of spirits? Well, um, they don't have the fullness of the Holy Spirit operating in them. Many of our brothers and sisters in Christ uh, do not operate in the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And so they're going to have to come up with a different perspective uh, because they're not effective in discerning of spirits. And so what they do, they set up rules and regulations to try to identify the behavior that is acceptable to them. For example, mm -hmm. uh, they're not going to uh, accept the prophetic voice because uh, the Bible clearly talks about false prophets and true prophets. And if you're not able to discern between good and evil and between uh, uh, false prophets and good uh, prophets, the ones and true prophets and the ones that are uh, uh, an instrument of the devil versus those that are instruments of God, then uh, they throw out all of them. Basically, <laughs> they eliminate all of them. Uh, and uh, they don't uh, allow young prophets uh, to be developed. So if there's somebody that uh, they've been uh, 
uh, with for a number of years and they realize that's a mature prophet, they might accept that person. But it's real important to have the gift of discerning of spirits. Uh, that way you can uh, you can accept uh, young people and, and older people and help people mature in the gifts. And uh, some of them may start out on a rocky road and make mistakes. But if you're uh, operating in the gifts of the spirit, uh, then you'll know how to help them, uh, help pick them up and uh, move them along the way because everybody starts at an immature stage and they have to be developed into maturity. But uh, if a group of people, uh, religious people, uh, uh, do not have the spirit moving within them, then the best thing they're going to do is to try to insulate from anything that's false. But let me tell you, uh, mm -hmm. The devil is only going to make counterfeits of what God has. Uh, he, he has uh, no mm -hmm. other option. Uh, God has these powerful things, and he's, uh, these are powerful things, and they're real, and they're true, and they're for you, and they're for the body of Christ. Uh, and so the devil is going to try to counterfeit those things. So he can't counterfeit something that's not true. So it has to, it has to be a real model, a real a something true out there uh, for the devil to come along and try to counterfeit. And so you have true, true prophets and false prophets. Mm -hmm. False prophets are under the influence of the devil. True prophets are under the influence, influence of, of the, God and, and, and led Spirit. by the Spirit led by the Spirit of God, and they're the voice of God. So, but if, if a congregation or a group of uh, Christians uh, are not being led by the Spirit of God and they're not allowing the Holy Spirit to move in their midst, they're going to try to insulate themselves from um, the possibility of anything false. And so they just don't let anything in. But they are both true and false, both real powerful things and counterfeit things that the devil tries to throw at us. And so the, a lot of Christian uh, organizations, uh, they build uh, models and, and try to insulate themselves and they put, try to put things in boxes. Oh, uh, okay, so uh, there might be a false prophet, so we don't want to let uh, any prophets come in. And so I've seen that a lot. I, I've been uh, in different aspects of the body of Christ and that, they, they love the Lord and they uh, are our are, are brothers and sisters, but they are limit the Holy Spirit. And when they limit the Holy Spirit, then they're not able to discern or distinguish between what is of the Lord and what is of the devil. And so they have to come up with their own man-made rules and regulations. But Jesus said that the traditions and doctrines of men make the word of God, God of none effect. effect. So it, it uh, limits it limits us, uh, and I've got a verse here on Cherry to read. John sixteen thirteen, but when He, the Holy Spirit of Truth, comes, He will guide you into all the truth, for He will not speak on His own or about Himself, but whatever He hears, He will speak, and He will disclose to you what is to come. Okay. So we need the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is going to show us so many things. He's going to uh, present the gifts to us. He's going to operate the gifts through you, uh, through all of Amen. you. Amen. And we're talking tonight about distinguishing between uh, what is of God and what is of the devil. A and this is something that every person mm -hmm. needs. It's needful for every one of you to be able to, to distinguish between what is of God and what is of the devil. Otherwise, you make mistakes. And and I have been uh, with a lot of people who have not had their senses exercised to distinguish between good and evil. And uh, I think about a couple of uh, examples where uh, men have come into a city and, and said they're going to do these great things and have these great programs. And mm -hmm. and uh, this happened a number of years ago. and and uh, the Holy Spirit rose up in me and told me not to have anything to do with him because he was a charlatan, but mm -hmm. he had gotten all the pastors together in town yes. and he was going to have this great uh, outreach uh, event. And uh, But when it came down to the very end, mm -hmm. uh, he stole all the money. He 
or raised thousands of dollars. And the people raised the money with him to raise thousands of dollars. And then he stole it all and left. But see, the Holy Spirit told me not to have anything to do with it, with him because he was a charlatan and he was going to steal the money. And uh, I, I didn't, there was no way that I could participate in that. Well, a few weeks ago, we were in a meeting with some people in another state mm -hmm. and they were telling us, oh, we're going to have a, this big outreach event and we've got this big uh, man coming in and he's going to run this uh, mm -hmm. evangelism program. And, uh, uh, and the, I listened to him talk and he spoke. And uh, uh, one of the things I kept picking up was money, money, mm -hmm. money, money. Yeah, yeah. And I, I told Sherry, there's no way that I can participate with this man. He, he, his concern is about money. And this is supposed to be an evangelistic event. You have to have discernment. You have to be have discernment mm -hmm. by the Holy Spirit of what is of God, God and what and is not. not of God. And here were a bunch of ministers in both of these two examples, a bunch of ministers that uh, uh, just went along with it because they hadn't developed uh, the spiritual gift of discernment. But everybody needs to walk in discernment. Every believer needs this. It's very critical to your life to keep you protected and safe uh, from uh, things that are not of God. Amen. Uh, and, and I have an example. Okay. We have a, uh, a friend of ours who's a minister in Mexico. And just a few months ago, uh, she took all the money she had from uh, savings, years from of savings, for years of savings uh, that was going to help her be able to retire from her workplace. And she invested it all in uh, what this um, one thing, one thing this man was, was saying that this will, you know, this investment will bring you lots of revenue and and um and so she she invested everything, everything she had everything and she got all and she got her friends to invest she got family members to invest and then the the man did the very same thing stole all he the money. stole all of the money and he left and they haven't been able to find him now they and now she's ha having to work well beyond her planned retirement day right and right. all of her families and friends uh, they're wanting their money back wanting her to pay them right uh, because well, uh, there was no discernment there no uh spiritual no discerning discernment. of spirits and, and we've known a lot of people who have um, been tricked by the schemes of the devil and Amen. lost Amen. thousands and thousands of dollars. I've known a lot of people like that. And uh, we also know people who have married uh, right. a, a spouse that was of the devil. And uh, there was right. one uh, woman in particular I'm thinking about that she contacted Sherry and I, and we both counseled her to wait, fast, seek the Lord. Yeah, we, we told her to fast and pray. And then come back and, and we would, you know, we would have our discussion again. And but we, she didn't we hadn't that. seen the guy, but we had all kinds of flags. That's discerning of the spirit. There was no way that we were uh, counseling her to move ahead with it. But she immediately did. Uh, she married mm -hmm. uh, the man and... Uh, financed this big honeymoon trip and when she got back she was ready for a divorce uh, because it was not what she yeah, had yeah. what she wanted and it was just a terrible situation and and we know a lot of people who made big mistakes because they did not have discerning of spirits right. and distinguishing between what's of god, god and, and what's, what's of the devil of amen and so we we need to all be able to develop this and a lot of people uh, have uh, have this uh, gift uh, to some extent in their life, but they uh, haven't been told how to develop it. And so that's the purpose of this message tonight is, is to give you some insights on how to develop uh, the discerning and distinguishing of uh, good and evil spirits. We are in a war and with demons 
And we have to know how to battle and how to fight in, in this Amen. war. It's not a natural war. And natural people, uh, they're, they're going to miss it and they're going to uh, be vulnerable. And we don't want any of you to be that way. Now, I have this concept of sphere of influence, that everybody has a sphere sphere of influence. Mm -hmm. And many of you have a gift of discerning a spirit, mm -hmm. but it has not been fully developed. Uh, and so when you go into a place where some other person has a sphere of influence that, and that person is influenced by a demon, and I'm not saying uh, possessed or she's possessed, but I'm saying uh, strongly influenced by that, that can affect a business. Uh, you can mm, go into mm. a store and, and your emotions might go up or down or, uh, because you're being influenced by the atmosphere in the store that you went into or in the workplace. You, know, you, you go into your workplace and your emotions might go up or down or, uh, all around and it may not be because of what you've done. It might be because of the atmosphere because there are people there in a position of influence uh, that are influenced themselves by the demons and they and they pass that along into their business, into their workplace. Uh, and so you might be feeling the impact of the demonic activity uh, when you go into a business or when you go to work or when you go uh, to different places and yet you didn't know what that was. Well, I'm telling you, it can be uh, just the atmosphere mm -hmm. that uh, there's demonic influences there because there are spheres of influence. And uh, of course, there's this verse in uh, in uh, Corinthians I want you to read. It's talking about Paul says he has a sphere of influence. He knew where his sphere of influence, he knew the limits mm -hmm. of his influence, but in, within his realm of influence or his sphere of influence, uh, he he had some authority in that. But he didn't have authority everywhere. Uh, no, he he just had it where he had a sphere of influence. It's the same for you. You have a sphere of influence. You need to know where that is. And you need to make sure that uh, you kick out any demonic influences in that area. And you mm -hmm. plead the blood to do that. For example, mm -hmm. Sherry and I travel a, a lot. And we're in hotel rooms a lot different hotel rooms. And when we go in there, we plead the blood of well, Jesus, Jesus over us and over the room. We don't know who was in there yeah, before, what right. kind of evil they were doing, what they were involved with. Uh, we don't know. Uh, I was talking to a young man uh, recently and he was telling me he was working for a hotel and, and he saw a lot of uh, sex tra trafficking coming through there. And he was trying to uh, coordinate with his boss to try to limit that, but you don't know what kind of what's been happening in the motel room you're in or the hotel room you're in. You need to take authority over it, yeah. and, and, and because you're going to be subject if you lay down, take a uh, go to sleep, try to go to sleep, you could be subject to demonic attacks, and they could bring uh, nightmares to you. They could keep you awake. They could bring, bring pain in your body, pain all kinds of things. And so you have to take authority over situations. Uh, so when you travel, take authority and plead the blood of Jesus over you. I'm just trying to give you some example. See, Sherry and I have walked this walk for a lot of years, and we both operate in the gift of discerning of spirits. Uh, but we also have uh, have matured, and we have a lot of experiences. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh We'll talk more about about those in a moment, but I want you to think about uh, Paul and Silas. You know, they were in uh, uh, they were in a place uh, where in Macedonia, where where God had sent them, mm -hmm. and, and then they're dealing with a, a young woman who is possessed by a devil. I want Sherry to read this, and it's in Acts chapter sixteen, and let's analyze it. Yeah. Acts chapter 16. Acts 16. Yeah, or may have already gone past it. Let's see if they're either. Well, I'll just tell you the story. Okay. Or she's looking it up. Uh, this woman has oh, here a, it is here. I got, I got okay. it. Spirit of divination. Yes. 
Now listen to what she says about that. Now it happened as Paul and Silas went to prayer, a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination met us who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling. This girl followed Paul and us and cried out saying, these men are the servants of the most high God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. And this she did for many days. But Paul being greatly annoyed uh, by her turned and said to the spirit, he spoke to the spirit. He did not speak to the girl. He spoke to the spirit that was doing this. I command you in the name of Jesus to come out of her. And he came out that very same hour. Okay. What I want you to see here is it's by the Holy Spirit. He knew that. By the Holy Spirit. He knew this woman was possessed and influenced by a demonic spirit, by an evil spirit. Now, what she said was good, and it was right. Uh -huh. I want you to share yeah, with us yeah. what she said. Yeah, she said. So you, you cannot go by it's what they say correct. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can't go by that. You've got to have mm -hmm. the witness of the Spirit within you. Re read what she said, said. These men are the servants of the Most High God. Yes, that's true. Who proclaim to us. The way of salvation. That is all true. It's all right. And that's yeah, I, what they were it, doing. It, it's a fact. That is a fact. Okay. But here's the issue. And this is why you need the Holy Spirit. Because you have to look at what is behind what is being said. And what is the motive of the heart. Because there are things about facts. And she spoke fact. A fact. These are servants of the Most High God. Mm -hmm. And they proclaim the way of salvation. Those are facts. Right. What she said. And the fact is a fact. But there is something more than a fact, and that's the truth. And then we have to look at motivation. And, and so what I want to show you tonight, there's basically two ways you can have discerning of spirits. And the first one is by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit mm. uh, gives mm. you the gift of discerning of spirits. of spirits. I want to share to read uh, 1 Corinthians 12. I've kind of gotten ahead of myself. I've jumped, jumped okay. around. You are jumping First, around tonight. 1 Corinthians 12. Okay. Verses 7 through 10. These are the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But the manifestation of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, is given to each one for the profit of all. Okay. Let's just look at this. So what are these gifts? They're nine gifts. We're going to read them all. We're going to look at all nine of them. But what do they get? It's the manifestation of the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit. And it's for the profit of all of us. Amen. And so every one of you needs to operate in the discerning of spirits or the distinguishing between evil spirits and God's spirits. Amen. So we're going to look at all of these, but you'll see one of them is discerning of spirits. It's a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Now, if you are with a group of people and they don't and they they don't encourage the manifestation of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, you're not going to be developed in this mm -hmm. area. But uh, we all need it. Okay, yeah, for read. the profit of all. Okay, so read for, this first. To one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. To another, the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing and miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning or distinguishing of spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. Hallelujah. Okay. The, but they're all by one spirit, and they are for the profit of all. Okay, and it manifests the Holy Spirit. Amen. And one of them is the discerning of spirits. spirits. Okay, now, why would we need that? Well, let's look at the next verse here in 1 John 4. Beloved, do not believe every spirit but try the spirits test the spirits whether they be of god okay 
So this is to beloved. That is you. you. <laughs> that is you. I mean, it's you are the beloved. And you are given a command here to try the spirits, spirits, test the spirits. How can you do it if you're not allowing the fullness of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to operate in you so that you have the gift of the Holy Spirit? Mm -hmm. It's a commandment. It, it's not for 50% of the people. It's mm -hmm. not for 20% of the people. It's not for 80% of the people. It's for everyone. Yeah. We have to test the spirits. And we Amen. cannot test the spirits with our natural mind. We have to have the Holy Spirit operating in us. Mm -hmm. Oh, hallelujah. That's good. Yeah, that is yeah, good. Yes, it's a it commandment is. to test the spirits. And we cannot test the spirits with our natural mind. We have to do it with the Holy Spirit. Amen. So here there are two big ways that we can begin this operating in the discerning of spirits. And uh, one of them is by the Holy Spirit, that gift of the Holy Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. You know, many of you have had a gift of discerning of spirits from an early age. Mm -hmm. I know I our daughter, daughter, Amy Elizabeth, had a gift of discerning of spirits from an early age. And uh, we had three young uh, children, and so we would often have a... Uh, a babysitter. We'd leave them with a babysitter and go out to eat or go to a movie. And uh, when we'd come back, if, if our daughter was not peaceful and yeah, settled, was not happy, that babysitter would never come back okay. because she yeah. could discern the difference between good and evil. Now, of course, she's a, a prophet of God. Yeah, she she yeah. operates in the a prophetic office. And now the prophetic office, it's so important for us to be connected with people in the prophetic office because they are supposed to operate consistently in three gifts. And one of them is prophecy. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is the word of knowledge. And mm -hmm. the third one is discerning of spirits. And so if you're never around prophets, uh, you won't have that, uh, that added instruction and be able to see how people operate with uh, uh, discerning of spirits. So uh, have, being around the prophets who operate in the gift of discerning of spirits, that will help you begin to develop that gift. But And what I said was that maybe as an early age, you've had a gift of discerning of spirits. And then that means that you can be around people and, and you can get uh, things can get on you and affect you uh, because of uh, evil spirits that are upon them. And, and it has happened to Sherry and I a lot that, uh, mm -hmm. uh, for example, we've been uh, around um, uh, some people who have just made us nauseous uh, if we get too close to them because they have unclean the spirits. spirits. They have unclean spirits. And sometimes they won't uh, uh, allow us to minister to them. And it may be that they have an unclean spirit and we can minister to them, but we have to work through nausea uh, because that's what happens when we get too close to people who have unclean spirits. Uh, but sometimes they're not going to uh, let us uh, minister to them. And we're not supposed to just cast out any demon because there'll be seven uh, more evil, evil come back. Yeah. And so we have to be cautious about what we do. But uh, there, you need to be around people who can discern good and evil, discern evil spirits and God's spirit. Uh, and that will help you develop because every one of you needs to develop. You may have had a gift of discerning of spirits and, and, and consequently your emotions and, and your feelings and may go up and down if you're around evil uh, people with evil spirits. Uh, but now you need to be developed in that. And that's what this message is about tonight, to help you uh, begin to move forward in the development uh, of that gift. And so uh, there's two different ways that we can develop in discerning of spirits. And one is through the gift itself of the Holy Spirit. And the second, and this is a maturity. This is about maturity. Mm -hmm. We mature. Uh, okay, so we go to 1 Corinthians 2. Do you have that verse, Sherry? Mm-hmm. But I want to say this, though, the the gift of discerning of spirits uh, 
it has a very important uh, uh, benefit for all of us uh, because it keeps us as believers out of deception and out of evil. And so it's not only uh, useful in in helping other people who are um, harassed or who are being attacked uh, by a particular evil spirit, but it's a safeguard uh, for us as believers. Uh, and so I just wanted to share that. So it's 1 Corinthians 2. Yes. This is from maturity. This discernment comes from maturity. First mm -hmm. yeah. Corinthians 2. Okay, working on it. Uh. It's. Ah, found it. Okay. First Corinthians 2, verses 14 through 15. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, the natural man, for they are foolish to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual, that's all of us, he who is spiritual judges all things. That's not, We're not judging people, we're judging the situation. We're judging the things around us. Yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. Okay, you hear that? We're to judge all things. Spiritual. Mm -hmm. If you're spiritual, well, all of you are spiritual. You should be judging all things. But we know from Matthew 7, verse 1, that uh, you judge not people. Judge not people. Yeah, lest people, you be judged. Lest yes. you be judged. And so, People just get away from all judgment then. But this verse, 1 Corinthians 2, says we're to judge all things. But no, we're not to be judged by people. <laughs> no, no, we're not to be judged. He said, I don't even judge myself. That's right. And so what we have to do, we have to ask the Lord. You mm -hmm. see, examine me, Lord. Examine me. Right. Uh, Psalm uh, 26. 26 2. Examine me, O Lord, and put me to the test. Refine my mind and my heart. Hallelujah. Refinement. Okay. okay, so we're not even to judge ourselves. We, we, uh, that'd be judging a person. If I judge myself, let's ask the Lord. This is all about asking the Lord. Well, you might say, well, I don't have uh, the gift of discernment. Well, ask for it. And you might say, well, uh, I well, haven't developed it very much. Well, ask the Lord for it. Right. All nine gifts. Listen to what I'm saying to you. All of the fruit of the Spirit, when you accept Jesus as your Savior and Lord, and the Holy Spirit comes in to your heart, into your you spirit said, man. You said the fruit of the Spirit. Yeah, that the fruit of the Spirit comes in. All nine of the gifts come in. He brings everything with him. He moves in with everything that he has. He moves in with all of the truth. However, we have the responsibility of producing the fruit in our lives. And we also have the responsibility to ask to be used of the Lord in the gifts. If you want to be used in prophecy, then ask the Lord to operate that through you. If you want discerning of spirits, which we are talking about tonight, Ask the Holy Spirit, let that be operating in me. Let me try the spirits. Let me know what's of you and what's of the enemy. And, and he'll do that. If you want uh, to, to be used in healing, if you want to be used in word of knowledge, then ask the Lord to be, let those be operating through you. They're already there. And you want them to be activated. And before this is over with tonight, we're going to activate the gifts in each one of you, especially the gift of discerning or distinguishing of spirits. Hallelujah. 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 
Okay. Oh, I want to tell the example about the about well, you tell the first part of the story about the about the lizard. Now I think we've told you this story, but we've got some new people with us tonight. So, well, so we're well, gonna... I had been uh, in a lot of pain for four days, but every night, and I couldn't sleep at night, but I would listen to healing tapes, a healing uh, a teaching, or healing ver uh, scriptures. Uh, and then on the fourth morning when I woke up, uh, there was a lizard uh, leaving our bedroom and the pain was gone. So for four days I had it, but I was continuing uh, focusing on the word of God about healing. And then this lizard left our bedroom. And it was a morning. big, it was a big uh, lizard that that walked on, on uh, up like a, a dinosaur or something. Okay, so I got up and, and started chasing it and I finally knocked it down. And then Sherry came. Yes, with a fly swatter. Uh, Brother Fred was trying to beat it to death with a fly swatter. And I said, oh no, we, we, we need more than that. And all of a sudden, that lizard was, I saw the evil spirit that it was. And I told Brother Fred to go and get a hammer that we needed to 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 uh, hit it in the head with a hammer and not a fly swatter. And, and then we... we okay. So we knocked it in the head with a <laughs> hammer and then we put it in a and body, body bag, bag and took it, out to, took the it to the garbage. Uh, okay, and that it was, was, it was demonic, gone. That was a demonic attack against my body. And, and I, if I had gone to the doctor, he would have given me something to deal with superficial yeah the symptoms the symptoms those are on the superficial not get to the root of the problem the root of the problem was demonic i've had a lot of demonic attacks against my body i don't know if you have or not mm -hmm. but i tell you uh natural doctors can't deal with that it is you need a spiritual uh doctor dr jesus amen uh, and that's who amen. you need amen. Uh, to overcome it because he you need to be able to discern between uh, evil spirits and uh, God's spirits. Now, I, I want to close uh, this message by an application. And uh, this is from um, Matthew chapter 12, verses 28 and 29. I want Sherry to read this. We'll just go slow. Application mm -hmm. of this message. But if I cast out demons by the spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Now, okay, how did Jesus cast out demons by the Spirit of God? Amen. Now, we're supposed to walk in his footsteps. Yes, aren't we? imitate okay. him. So we need to be able to cast out demons by the Spirit of God. Now, let's think about what Matthew 10, verses 7 and 8 said. He said, preach the gospel of the kingdom, heal the sick, uh, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. Mm -hmm. See, this is a commandment. Mm -hmm. Cast out demons and uh, glory to God. Mm -hmm. Raise the, the dead. dead. That was Amen. the last one. Amen. Right. I was thinking about raising. Cast out devils is a commandment. How can you cast out devils if you cannot if you cannot distinguish between, between what is good, good and, and evil? evil. You've got to do it. Mm -hmm. And so there's two ways that you develop in a discerning of spirits. And the first is the gift of the Holy Spirit. And you know what uh, Paul said? Uh, he said, desire the best gifts. Well, one of the best gifts mm -hmm. is the gift of discerning of spirits. Amen. So Amen. do that. Desire the gift of discerning of spirits. And then mature. And as you mature in the word of God and in mature spiritually your discernment increases uh and that's what uh, matthew uh five i mean hebrews five talks about he that is of uh strong food mm -hmm. solid food belongs to those who have uh are mature who mm -hmm. have by reason of so practice, practice. Uh, have exercised mm -hmm. their senses read this verse here. yes it's a good verse Good verse. You need to write this one down. Hebrews 5, 14. But solid food is for the mature, who because of practice have their senses, their spiritual senses trained 
to distinguish between good and evil. Okay, so I, I'm saying there's two ways that you get uh, the discerning of spirits and, and, and develop a discerning of spirits. And one is the gift of discerning of spirits, and that's from the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. And the other is maturity. And that is by practicing. Have you been practicing mm -hmm. deciding what mm -hmm. is of God and what is not of God? Okay, so back to the application. So we need to be applying this message mm -hmm. because you need to be developing in discerning of spirits, distinguishing between good and evil. And so we're, we're back then in Matthew 12, 12. verses, Sherry read 28. Now I want to move to 29. Okay. Or how can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds up the strong man and then he will plunder his house? Okay. So here is the issue. What is the strong man mm -hmm. over your marriage, over your relationships with your siblings and your over your relationship with uh, your parents and with your children? You, you need to look and see what are the strong men. There mm -hmm. may be multiple. Or in the workplace. Or, or in, you need to bind those things up. See, when I was in the workplace, I was a teacher, and, and I would go around and I would anoint the mm -hmm. uh, desk where the students were going to sit uh, because I wanted to be in charge of that classroom, and I didn't want demonic influences coming in there and disrupting things. Uh, so in the workplace. And so if you have a workplace that you go into, well, anoint uh, the office and anoint uh, uh, the desk and anoint things are in your home. Anoint. Make sure that you don't have demonic influences there. You need to know what the strong men are that you're dealing with. And that begins to practice. Remember that word practice. Mm -hmm. You've got to be practicing what we're talking about tonight, because is if you are a good steward of a little bit, whatever little God has mm -hmm. given you, whatever little you have to begin with, if you are a good steward of it, you begin to practice discerning the difference between good and evil, distinguishing between good and evil, you begin to practice that, then God gives you more. He develops your gifting. And uh, it operates in my life in two ways. One is through the gift of the Holy Spirit, and the other is maturity because I have practiced, I have mm -hmm. practiced, I have trained my senses to distinguish between good and evil. And I'm not where I want to be. Uh, Sherry and I talked about this uh, last night. We want to be more sensitive to the Holy Spirit. I believe we all need to be more sensitive. We need to be practicing uh, our senses to distinguish between good and evil. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being here. I'm going to